Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name's Adam, and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. You can think of it as an introductory college level course. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite to learn more on your own and through this channel, and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. A little about my background. Uh, I went to school for electrical engineering, graduated, joined the military, got injured almost immediately. Then they uh, sent me back to school for environmental sciences, where I focused on chemistry and a bit on microbiology. That's why I love the art and science of distilling, as it touches on all these topics. I am by no means an expert on all these things, so if I say something wrong, and I probably will at some point, please point it out. Please provide a source, uh, double points for a peer-reviewed source. So for this first series of videos, uh, they're all going to hover around safe home distilling practices and safe distilling in general. The topics covered will be PPE and chemical handling, materials, vessels and containers, solders, pressure, seals, flammability, and methanol. So in this video, the specific video, I'm going to go through PPE and chemicals. Uh, a touch on a chemical reaction, just to give you an idea of how things can go wrong. So let's get started. PPE, you've probably heard about PPE on the news a lot lately because of the coronavirus pandemic. It stands for Personal Protective Equipment. For us, PPE is going to be lab standard, I guess you'd call it. You'll want safety glasses or safety goggles. I wear the goggles because I also wear prescription glasses. You'll want gloves. These are vinyl nitrile. You can also use latex. You'll want some uh, old clothing that you don't care if it gets dirty or ruined. I have my lab coat and I also have uh, an old shirt and an old pair of jeans. The shirt is long sleeve. You want long sleeve so that if something splashes, you don't get it on your skin immediately. You'll also want closed toed shoes for that same reason. If you spill something, it won't land on your directly on your feet. So don't wear sandals. Don't wear Crocs. Get proper shoes. The reason we use all this PPE is because there are a lot of dangerous chemicals that, if not handled properly, can seriously hurt you. One of those is the extremely popular sanitizer, Starsan. This is an acid-based sanitizer. It's 50% phosphoric acid as it comes in the bottle. It can burn your skin and I don't even want to know what happens if it gets into your eye. Another commonly used chemical is uh, a chlorine based bleach like this Clorox here. Corrosive, very strong oxidizer, can hurt you quite a bit. Another set of compounds you'll be using are the salt forms of a lot of nutrients which can, which can become dangerous when mixed with water. This here is diammonium phosphate or DAP which turns into something else when you mix it into water. We'll get into that uh, in a little bit. You want to make sure to read the labels of these chemicals to get an idea of first aid, what can happen to you if you get it on you, uh, and proper disposal. You can also go online and find the Safety Data Sheet, or SDS, formerly they were called MSDSs, or Material Safety Data Sheets. This one is for Starsan, from Five Star Chemicals, because there are a whole bunch of phosphoric acid-based sanitizers. 
all SDS sheets are standard in how or in what sections contain which information. We are specifically interested in section two, hazard identification. It has two classifications here, two H numbers, which are hazard numbers, H314 and H402. Below that, it gives us a, a general description of what those hazard numbers mean. H314 causes severe skin burns and eye damage. H402 harmful to aquatic life. So that's as it is in the bottle. When you go to use it, you're going to, you follow the instructions. Uh, with this, it's one ounce into five gallons, which is 30 milliliters into 20 liters. It's a dilution factor of 630 times, which is quite a bit. So at that dilution, it is no longer uh, a caustic compound. You won't get severe skin burns or eye damage. It's not harmful to aquatic life at that level. But you'll still want to wear safety glasses because it would still hurt probably quite a lot if you got it in your eye. Um, if you're extra worried about the aquatic life portion, you could dump some baking soda in to neutralize the acid, to neutralize the surfactant that's in there as well. Before dumping it down the drain and uh, turn on the tap when you do that so you're diluting it even more. So wear proper PPE when you're using certain chemicals. You don't have to use it all the time. I generally say use safety glasses all the time. You don't want to get anything in your eye. But you don't always have to wear gloves. You don't always have to wear proper lab coat or a long sleeve shirt or even jeans. And uh, don't mix the chemicals if you don't know whether or not they will react, create a bad or negative reaction or compounds. A good example would be bleach and ammonia, a mixture that people still seem to create. They think it makes a better cleaner or they may do it by accident. It uh, creates a class of compounds called chloramines. Specifically, it creates inorganic chloramines because there's also organic chloramines. Inorganic. The reason I'm bringing up chloramines specifically is because you can accidentally make it in the process of making a mash or a wash. How does this happen? Okay, so we had our diammonium phosphate. This is its chemical formula. For when you put it into water, it disassociates into two different compounds. NH3 and NH4H2PO4. So this is our diammonium phosphate. This is monoammonium phosphate. And this one is ammonia. So say you uh, clean, you clean out your bucket, then you decide to sanitize it, and you use bleach, and you think to yourself, I don't have to rinse out star sand because it's a, it's a no rinse sanitizer. Maybe I don't have to rinse out bleach, so you don't. Just fill it with water and decide to start putting in your nutrient salts. Maybe you're going to do a sugar wash. Sugar has no nutrients in it, so you need to add nutrients. You mix in the DAP, 
it disassociates pneumonia, you now have ammonia and bleach. A series of chemical reactions will start happening almost immediately. The first thing that will happen is a compound called monochloramine will be created. That will react with what bleach is left over and it will create a compound called dichloramine. And then that will react with what bleach is left over and create a compound called trichloramine. All three of these compounds are toxic. These last two are quite volatile, which means they will evaporate at normal temperatures. When they, people say normal temperatures, they mean temperatures that humans are normally living at. So let's just say 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius for my uh, imperial friends in the U.S., I can't do that conversion off the top of my head, sorry. So that would be like, what, um, 65 to, what, like 100 Fahrenheit? Something like that. Anyways, they're normal room temperatures is what volatile means. Um, trichloramine here, you've probably smelled it before. It makes up a major component of the odor at public pools after people have peed in it or swam around in it because nitrates are, well, urea is a major component of urine and it is a nitrogen-based compound. And then a lot of your saliva and sweat uh, body oils have nitrogen compounds in them as well. It'll mix with the chlorine and create a chloramine. For us, it won't create much chloramine, uh, not enough to make lethal levels. It could be an irritant. It might not even get to that level, but a bigger issue is that it will make enough to be dangerous for your yeast. So you'll need to remove it. You can do that by using a metabisulfite salt Uh, typically sold as a product called Campton tablets. I got mine at a camping store. It'll either be a sodium or potassium based metabisulfite. Both of them work fine. They do the same thing. They'll break, they'll separate into a potassium ion and then the metabisulfite, which is what you want, and it will essentially neutralize any of the chloramines in there. So this is just one example of how chemistry plays a big role in the safety of distilling, not to mention everything else, all the good stuff that we want happening. Uh, I hope this video wasn't too complicated. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, please click subscribe and click that bell notification for new videos. If you want me to do a video on a specific topic, please leave a comment or send an email and uh, we can discuss it. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.